All right, so how are you guys doing today? You're perfect. All right, so I'll uh, start the uh, chapter 13 again. So we uh, now, today we're going to do hydrogen in a bond. Uh, this is the, what we're going to do. Um, uh, like I told you before, the hydrogen one is a bit more complicated than the carbon ones. So I'll try to explain one by one. So the first thing let's talk about is the chemical, obviously. Chemical sheet. So how we can analyze the data here. So before we move on to any specific signal and certain point, uh, there are uh, several things I need to we need to go over together. So the first one is the how are we gonna analyze the the equivalent protons or hydrogen um, the compounds here. So the first thing what we're going to do is um, homotopic um, protons, uh, meaning uh, if you have a same, right? We have a carbon, carbon. We're going to have a hydrogen, hydrogen. Uh, I'm going to put it more in the <coughs> like a S, like R, configuration form you don't like. So I'm gonna use wedge and dash line. But just it means just the just the uh, I think we have a two carbons and three hydrogen on those uh, three not those yeah those three hydrogen on this two. So if this is the case uh, what we're gonna do is the if we're gonna change the uh, if we're gonna compare these two, or uh, chemically speaking, uh, electronically speaking, equivalent to each other. So whenever you look at the signal on each proton, so the problem is from the carbon, if we have a number of uh, similar protons on the same carbon, right? So we want to know if these two protons will show you the same signal or not first. Meaning, once again, if they do have a similar environments around it together on the same carbon here, okay? So let's try to compare. So one way to compare those two is the try to replace, just choose one of them and replace two other elements. Like you can just choose anything, so you can say X over here, okay? So just put the X over here. And then the you can choose this one, but you can also choose the other one also too, right? So let's try to do that too. And now I'm going to change this one. This one over here. So um, I changed this hydrogen with the X. And now I change this one, the other hydrogen, uh, with X over here. And then only thing you have to do is compare these two. So try to compare these two, and um, you know this is actually the single bond, right? You can just rotate it. To rotate it, uh, you can actually find out even though you switch the different protons on the same carbon with X, it will be actually the same compounds. Makes sense, right? Even though you switch the different protons on the same carbon, if you just rotate it, it will be just that one. Right? So uh, in this case, uh, even though you switch the different protons on the same carbon, they show you the same identical compound. So that's why we named it homotopy. Homo is the same. Okay? So obviously, uh, it will be same as these two, or these two, or these two will be all the same. So meaning, those three hydrogen <coughs> on this carbon or this carbon we show you the same chemical sheet, meaning same environment. So the signal will be only one for those three, right? Because they're same anyway. The, the signal only depends on, once again, same as carbon environment. But if you do that in this way, to compare if it's really different or not, they will actually show you pretty much the same environment because they're, technically speaking, same compounds to each other. Make sense, right? 
All right, so let's do just the second one is what we call enantiotopic. So the, this is from the enantiomer. Enantiomer, either way is fine. The enantiomers. Uh, this is for. Uh, it's a quick review from the over one. This is a mirror image to each other. Mirror, mirror. So if, if you, so if you guys remember R and S configuration, uh, there will be the other one. So if this is R and the one side, the other will be S and so forth. So this is a quick review from the, <coughs> the other one. So uh, let's change this one to. So okay. The word was still had it. Oh, they, okay. I'll change. I'm sorry. So I'll change this uh, a little bit lower. Uh, it's not very sure of well in the uh, so let's change this one to in this way uh, this okay I'm sorry so I'll just show you in the like logical way So at this time, I'm going to change also, I'm going to compare these two again. So here or here. So I'm going to switch this one to X, chlorine, bromine, anything is OK. So let's try to do the other one as well. So now I switch this one with the X. Now I switch this one over to X. Okay. So if you look at this one here, the you actually see some the quite very descent uh, because the um, from this point of the carbon, this kind of carbon, this is just one R group, right? And this is a methyl group over here, and you have a hydrogen, and you have a replaced element X. So you have a, this carbon has four different groups on it. So it makes a uh, chiroid center. You guys remember this, right? Chiroid center. Okay. So the same thing over here. This is a one R group. And this is a one methyl group here. X and hydrogen. And now this one also has a chiroid center because all four different uh, groups on this carbon as well. So if you look at this one over here, compare these two, uh, only difference is either hydrogen is on the back or the front. Okay. So whenever you try to, maybe I can switch this one to the chlorine over here, just in case, just in case. It could be anything is fine. Okay. So if that is the case, try to number the Conningo pre-law convention. Okay. So it'll be one, two, three. So it's going this way, right? See, this is a, the, in the wet, means it's the front. Dash line is going back, side of this four. Okay, so it's one, two, three. Because this is a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. There are only three hydrogen here. So even though they're the same carbon, it still be one, two, three, four. Hydrogen is the smallest. So meaning, and also your, the least group, is already on the back. You don't have to change anything. It's just the way it is. It's rotating. So it's rotating in this wise. It's our configuration on this carbon. Okay. So they're all same. They're all same. But the this is going on front, right? The hydrogen is going on front. They're all same. But this is going on front. So we're gonna switch to the other side because uh, you have to look at it on the first group on the back, but it's just the front, you have to look at it on the other side. So this has become S configuration automatically. So uh, it's literally what I'm really saying, 
enantiotrophic, meaning they're not, if you switch the each different hydrogen with a different group, uh, element X, it could be anything, it's fine. We'll show you some uh, RS conjugation inversion, meaning it's a mirror image to each other. Make sense, right? We good? Okay. So if that is the case, um, I know this is a mirror image, but if you think about it this way, um, me looking at the mirror, I see myself, but in the, the other side, right? But still, it's really hard to tell the environment that I have is different from the other side of the mirror, because it just switched. But the uh, environmental-wise, it's the same, pretty much. Right, because they <coughs> or have a similar environment from this group, this group, this group, this group, but they're different. So uh, this one also will show you these two hydrogen. So initially with just the hydrogen, we just switched for making imaginary compounds over here. So these two hydrogen also will be on the same position in this chemical shift. So one signal. So homotopy enantiotopic, those two hydrogens will show you the same chemical shift. So no two signal, because they share the similar environment. They will, these two will show you in the same uh, signal, one peak. Okay. Make sense, right? So what about the case that we make need to see? Oh, OK, I'll just do it again. So the how about this one? So the third one is the diastereo. Oh. Okay. So uh, this one, I hope you guys remember, it should have uh, at least more than one chiroidy center on the compound. Because the, it will be more like the two position RR, but it only change in the other color sign is to the other way, okay? So the, if that is the case, I can show you, okay? And then uh, I'll switch it, this one as the hydrox group, the hydrogen over here. And I'm gonna compare This one, okay? I'm gonna compare if these two proton uh, or hydrogen will show you the same signal or not. So same, uh, I'm gonna change either one of this, one of this and compare to each other. Okay? So I'm gonna copy the same thing. Okay, and then this one is, oh, sorry. more uh, clear that way. In this one. So the let's try to switch this one to maybe chlorine again. Okay. And uh, let's try to the other one. Hydrogen with the chlorine again here. So now we're gonna compare these two. Uh, but now you have uh, all the other neighboring carbon also has a chiroid center. This is a methyl or the R hydrox group over here. So let's try to quick one, two, three, four. And this is already on the back, so if you go this way, uh, we'll just do S configuration over here. So we didn't change anything over here. So this is also S. We don't have to do this, it's the same. Okay. Um, but this one, let's try to do one, two, three. So it's going on clockwise over here, and hydrogen is already on the back, which is the, the number four, so it's, you don't have to change anything, we are over here. Okay. Uh, but the case here is it flipped, so now your hydrogen is on the front, the number one is on the back, so you have to look at it on the other side, so this will make, <coughs> this is the R, yeah, S over here. So if you compare these two, this one has a two color center using S and R, it also shows the S on this side, but just the inversion of the, the configuration on the other side, which is S with the R. So meaning uh, they are dia stereo 
isomers to each other. Okay. So in this case, uh, so okay. Now once again, this is an imaginary couple we just made. So technically, we just looked at this one. Okay. So if that is the case, these two protons, uh, the hydrogens are different environment now uh, because of the the other chiral center is a set. So depending on the where which side you're locating the proton will change the slightly different environments. It's unlike the enantiomer topic uh, case. So in this case, these two hydrogen will not show the same signal. So there will be two different signals on these two hydrogens. Because they're not either homotopic or enantiotopic. Because of the diester means this is also chiral center. You can actually do anything but set. But putting the, the other side will have a slightly different environment. So signal will be slightly different. Maybe not a lot, but uh, okay. Kind of makes sense. Okay. So just uh, I just want you to uh, remember if they are just the same. Um, you can say it's the uh, you know homo topic <coughs> or the mirror image enantio uh, topic. It will be just one signal from these two. But if it's diester, it will be two signal. And this is a kind of a okay, obvious one, but we call it a uh, hetero topic. Uh, in your textbook, it says uh, unrelated. Uh, meaning it's just a totally different hydrogen. Uh, I can give you one example here. Okay. If you look at this one here, we don't even need to worry about anything, uh, but maybe you can change this one and this one. Okay. And then uh, let's say if these two uh, protons will show you the same signal or not, obviously it's different because the okay. So just switch this one with the chlorine, okay, here. And then if you switch this one to this one, okay. They're just different. Look at this. There's no same structure. Because uh, you have a chlorine position is just different. Also, that's parameter. It's just, a, just different compound. So it's kind of obvious that this hydrogen <clears throat> well, this hydrogen are different in a different environment. So definitely you have uh, two different signals for each, this one and this one. Makes sense, right? Good. So this is kind of easy one, uh, but it also says in the textbook. Uh, so um, now you guys wonder, oh, so we need to find out how many signals will be there from the compound. We need to all do this uh, most of the time. Probably yes, but here's a easy way to do it too. So um, it's a pretty much the same as the carbon NMR. If you can find some axis or the plane, so they can be symmetrical to each other. Uh, those that uh, matching protons are uh, the same, same signal. So for example, <clears throat> if I give you this one, uh, there, uh, there are three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So there's eight protons are there, right? But if you can find the good symmetrical plane, with the x axis here, uh, you're actually going to have uh, these two are the same environment. So there'll be only one signal here. Now, as we know, those are all in the same carbon, in the same um, environment. It'll be the same, but also, I think, uh, no, I'm sorry, the symmetrical to the other metal group uh, protons over here, right? So those two will show you also on the same signal, but very strong. So you have a six protons are kind of what on the same championship position here. So even though there are eight hydrogen in this compound, uh, if you look at the eight uh, hydrogen NMR, 
you're only going to see two signal inputs. That's it. Uh, because of the, so this is an easy way out for you. Uh, whenever you look at the compounds, you can also do if it's homotopic, natiotopic, you know, heterotopic, or um, uh, diastereotopic. That's okay. Uh, but if you can find the really easy, you know, you know, good symmetrical looking compound, you don't even have to do it. Just make sure you guys have a good matching uh, hydrogen so we'll show you in the same signal. So you can easily tell that it's just two signals. Kind of makes sense. Let me give you one more example here. <clears throat> so if you look at the this one, so the you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there'll be eight hydrogen over here. But if you do this, can you possibly estimate how many signal will be there though? Even though there's eight hydrogen on this carbon, I'm sorry, this com compound, how many signal do you think will be there? So, oh, so if you, so this is symmetrical to each other, right? You see it, right? Okay. So, meaning those two will have, have the same chemical environments. So two here, two here, carbon, carbon, double bond, methyl group here, and two, two all the way down. This is the same, but just different side. Here, and this is the same as well here. So those two are match. They share the same chemical environment on these two and these two. So there will be two superfluid, two signals. There you go. Uh, so this is the easy way out. Um, you may not be able to do this all the time, but most of the time, this is a really good, convenient way to tell, oh, maybe just uh, two signals will be enough for this one, because they will have a two sets of the protons. We'll show you the same environment around in this compound. So only two signals are there. Um, so the <coughs> Meaning there, these two and these two are equivalent. Uh, they're equivalent in the same chemical environment. There, um, so kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. Kinda makes sense. So the let me give you uh, one example again, so you can have some more idea. <clears throat> so for proton NMR, you you're going to have a, a lot less uh, range of the delta. PPM uh, up to 0 to uh, <clears throat> 12 over here. Uh, normally it's within 10, but sometimes uh, Okay, so this is where you can find some really good carboxylic hydrogen here, hydrogen right here. Okay. And this is where you can find some good aldehyde hydrogen over here. And uh, this is where you can find a pretty good aromatic uh, hydrogens over there. Um, that, and also, interestingly, the, this is where you can find some the hydrogen from the carbon-carbon double bond. You can also call this vanillic uh, hydrogen, uh, but this is uh, right next to aromatic ring hydrogen. Uh, and this is where you have some carbon to oxygen to hydrogen or nitrogen or any halogen groups. So any halogen groups attached to the carbon, so the, also the hydrogen bond to this one. Uh, you can find somewhere around the four to the, sometimes even a little higher than two. Uh, that's uh, pretty good. And then uh, you have uh, obviously most shielded groups uh, will be obviously terminal carbon, so primary, secondary, Tertiary, but they have all carbon okay those, those groups are will be there okay and then uh, here in between around two we, this is where you can have some good uh, alytic uh, hydrogen over here so there'll be two carbon so we'll have a double bond has another single bond, but it will have uh, some lytic position, carbon, three carbons, but there's a hydrogen there. Um, 
So this is kind of uh, something you can uh, use, but obviously, uh, once again, I'll give you the table. So you don't have to memorize it. Uh, but uh, it, it actually kind of makes sense that if it's near electronegative elements like oxygen, it's more issue. And also double bond and triple bond because of the pi bond, the pi, the orbitals, that makes it more easier too. But somewhere between aromatic and vanillic is pretty much the same. But obviously, just with the hydrogen or less hydrogen would be the far more shielded because the carbon can beat up these hydrogen with the electronegativity, so it can have more shield with the electron. So uh, this is a kind of just quick overview, but uh, yeah, don't, you don't have to memorize this, okay? I'll give you the table for carbon NMR, hydrogen NMR, IR, mass, I'm not mass spec because they are everything, but uh, you kind of have some idea though, right? It has a more D shield and down field, or shielded up, up field and both fields, okay? All right, that's, if that is the case, <clears throat> let's give you one example over here. So if I give you one compound that looks like this, like this. So the um, this one is pretty good from the carbon sphere, but obviously they're really well equivalent to each other. It is those protons and this carbon to the this the this carbon to the carbon carbon and all up. so the, the acid group carbon and also the methyl group will be here, here, here will be pretty much the same. So those nine hydrogens are so there will be in total twelve hydrogens but in total in this side is nine. But as you can see, the environment of those are, they can also rotate it too, right? So they will experience pretty much the very similar chemical uh, like environment around those three, nine hydrogens on three carbons. So once again, this will be located somewhere between like around one or less than one, but it's the nine hydrogens are kind of overlap on the same one signal. So it's somewhere around one, okay, or a little higher than one. And this is the one that is the bound to near the oxygen or car carbon, oxygen, hydrogen here, right? So like I said before, it's around here, okay? So uh, we can put some peaks also here as well. Okay? So uh, in this case, uh, what actually that's something good about the H, the hydrogen NMR than the carbon NMR. You can actually make an integration on these peaks, meaning um, you see there's the nine hydrogens making this really big peak on this more shielded up field over here. And this because it's oxygen and carbonic group, acid group here, it's more drawn to the down field because it's, that's why it's uh, more on the left side than this one. And that is the three hydrogens are making on this one same one peak, one signal over there. So it's somewhat good, but much uh, smaller than this one. But unlike a carbon, unlike a carbon NMR, uh, this peak means something here, actually. So you can do some integra integration on here by just simply measuring the area under the peak. Okay. So once again, this is from what? Three protons, this is from the nine hydrogen uh, protons over here, right? So if you uh, compare the area in, under the peak, it will be exactly one, two, three. Um, so the on your exam, I'll also give you those numbers as well. Uh, so you can tell, oh, we have uh, some more downfield protons are on here, but it's uh, you know, three times smaller than this one. So either the ratio between the number of the proton here and here should be one to three. So it'll be easier for you to analyze the compounds, uh, which also uh, correspond to the actual structure of that the compound in the market. Uh, so uh, they do either two different ways. They actually do make this one and they make this one. So if you compare this one, it's exactly one third of that is here. And sometimes what they do is uh, they do it a whole, and also here like this. So those ones 
I use section one, two, three. So either way, but um, I know this is kind of confusing. So on your exam, I'll give you a number right away. So you just know that what's the ratio between these two. It will not be like, you know what I'm saying? So I'll give you just one, three right there with the integral uh, symbol. So you don't have to worry about the comparing because it might be a bit you know, arbitrary in the paper. So I'll give you one and three in the integral number. You just know that there'll be either one, two, um, one, two, three, or two to six, or three to nine. You see there'll be ratio numbers and proton. That same peak will be that ratio. Make sense, right? So this is only happening, once again, because of the, um, they are on the equivalent positions. They are on the same, so there'll be one peak. Uh, but the problem is the, <clears throat> there is a bit more complicated case that if you don't see the not equivalent protons are neighboring each other. So here's the thing. Um, So if you look at this one over here, uh, the signal from here, because of this, the, the bond to the carbon, the bond to the bromine, which is electron more negative, should be somewhere in here. Once again, you can remember, somewhere in here. This is the terminal carbon proton signal, so it'll be around one here. Okay. So uh, now we know there'll be two signals because this is uh, this is the one on the equivalent on the same carbon. And this is two protons, but same, same environment from this carbon too. So there'll be two signal. So I'm gonna show you. So it'll be four, two, one. So it'll be this one will be more downfield because this one drawing more electron. So this is downfield, right? So they're gonna show you P over here. Okay, and this one will be obviously around the one over here. Uh, but in here, those two hydrogens are equivalent, those three hydrogens are equivalent to each other, but these two are different for sure, you guys know this, right? If you're switching one of this as a chlorine and chlorine, it will be different compounds. So that's why it should be different signal, obviously. But anyway, if that is the case, uh, one thing that you should know more from here is that these two are not equivalent to each other. These are, but those two are different, right? Then they're actually going to interfere each other. Um, so, what happened to here in more from here? This signal is right here, but we'll show you. Rear peak looks like this, okay? And this one will show you. And there's a four peaks on the same signal, so we call this quantet. Okay, and we there's a three peaks on the same signal, we call this triplet. Okay. So whenever you see there's a splitting the peak on the same signal, uh, we call this a, a multiplexity, uh, meaning you just uh, dividing the same signal into certain uh, numbers like four or three. So the, <clears throat> here's the reason why. Uh, you know they're not equivalent to each other, right? This, hydro, this proton, those protons are not same in the same environment. Meaning, think about it. Uh, whenever you measure the signal here, it's because of they have a magnetic moments themselves, like protons, right? It has one proton, one electron over there. But, Whenever they get this, the uh, equal amount of the uh, radio frequency wave force energy to make the peak, uh, those the ones close to this protons are also have a uh, what? So <clears throat> you have a uh, here. Uh, those not just these two for this signal, but they all also have a. Uh, Magnetic moments as well there, because they're also proton too, and they're close to each other. So what happened to this one is the uh, this one, the so for for this one, so 
So for this one, sigma over here, but you have uh, two protons uh, going to make some uh, change. So meaning you have a uh, this this is for this one, right? So this one will have two protons will interfere with their external magnetic field. So the if this is the amount of the apply the uh, magnetic field, uh, the you actually going to have a different number for effective magnetic field strengths uh, because of the neighboring protons that also has the magnetic moments. So, but like I said, they're not always going to align parallel to external, but also sometimes they do what? In the anti-parallel to each other, right? You guys remember this one, right? For the, when you apply the external magnetic field, they do either way, either gonna follow the direction of the magnetic field, external magnetic field, or against it, okay? So if that is the case, this will be, this peak will be in here. So this, there are two possible magnetic moments they can do is either these two will show you the same, same direction of their uh, magnetic spin, right? Or they can either do this or this. Oh, okay, let me write it in this way. So now you flip the this one goes down now, this one goes up. And maybe these two all had an anti parallel position over here. So uh, if this so this is the external magnetic field, okay? This is the initial magnetic field, applied and magnetic field. But if these two neighboring magnetic moment to this one, so this is this this one over here, this one will have a also same direction. In total, in total magnetic, effective, effective magnetic field, that this proton, three protons will feel will be stronger. Because of the, this neighboring protons to this one also have the same directional magnetic strengths of added on to external ones. So this will, the magnetic field that those protons will feel from this case will be what? Stronger. They feel stronger magnetic field because it's added on from the neighboring proton magnetic moments as well. So the, the this peak, <clears throat> so let's say this has to be some 1.1, for example. So this is the original peak that sh should be. But when they experience the stronger, stronger <coughs> field, they move on to the down field because they need to high need to have a higher frequency in this way. So it goes to here. So this splits into here, but if it's these two protons and neighboring protons are going against it, the magnetic field that experienced is less than what it was. So then it goes to more shielded, because they they not having that much of the magnetic field anymore. These neighboring protons, when they these two go against it, they makes the help them experience the weaker excellent magnetic field. So they will be more upshift right there. But obviously, if you're looking at by chance, even though they go up and down, this is the 50% chance, <clears throat> this is a 25% chance, 25% chance, right? Just chance wise. The combination is only four, right? Then this is the way you're gonna experience the same X and field, because one will cancel, the other will cancel the other one. So there will be no effect on the external position here. So the, and also there will be two. 50% is that and only a one quarter chance is the up and down field. So this is why it doesn't look like this. It looks like this. The, uh, okay. Don't worry about it, I'll do this again. So uh, I'll talk about why there's a quartet thing, or triplet, or even the, uh, the doublet. If there's two peaks, doublet. I'll explain it, okay? Don't worry about it. Uh, but just remember, <coughs> if there's a non-equivalent portents there, 
there will be the splitting of the peaks. Uh, and I'll tell you the M plus rule, M plus one rule, everything on this. Okay, I'll stop here.